a walking tour of the Redondo Beach Pier in Redondo Beach, California. I'm Chris, this is our Traveling Princess, and in this video, we're gonna take you on a guided walking tour of this pier. So I'm gonna flip this around so you can see the pier that we're walking on. Now, this pier is one of the most well-known piers in the Los Angeles area. It's approximately seven miles south of Los Angeles International Airport, and what's really interesting about this pier is it is California's largest endless pier. What does it mean for something to be an endless pier? Well, it doesn't have an end that you walk down. Instead, it's actually kind of a horseshoe shape. Actually, this pier dates back to the end of the uh, 1800s, where it was actually a number of different separate wharfs that were used for railroads to pick up timber uh, from ships that would dock here in Redondo Beach. Over the years, it's been collected into a number of different um, piers collected together, pleasure piers, fishing piers. Today, it's all kind of together as this Redondo Beach Pier. This part that we're walking on right now, I would consider this to be the heart of the Redondo Beach Pier. It's actually a pretty narrow walkway here. Uh, and we're here during the pandemic, California's shut down, so there's no indoor dining in any of these restaurants, but there are tables outside that people are eating at. Uh, so one of the great things about the Redondo Beach Pier is there's actually a lot of food. You can see here there's an outpost of hot dog on a stick, though interestingly enough it says it's a uh, it says it's Craig's Hot Dog on a Stick, a Redondo Beach tradition since 1962. Just to the right of Craig's, we've got a little Chinese food place where you can get some orange chicken, shrimp. There are a lot of uh, Korean restaurants on here that we'll uh, see as we explore this a little more. Here's a restaurant that looks like it's a seafood restaurant. It's been here for 37 years, specializing in a lot of Mexican kind of seafood. You can get your shrimp fajitas, fried whole tilapias, seafood combos. But as I mentioned, a lot of these, a lot of Koreans come here too. So there's also a lot of Korean uh, things on this pier. Now, again, this pier doesn't really have a beginning and it really doesn't have an end because it's horseshoe shaped. We'll take a look at this map here so you can see from overhead what the pier looks like. It's this horseshoe like this. I started this video right here. We walked down this kind of center column. We're right here by El Torito. We're gonna continue to walk this way, this way, this way, and then we'll walk up and explore the international boardwalk. So collectively, the pier technically is named the Municipal Pier, but everybody calls it the Redondo Beach Pier. Collectively, the Redondo Beach Pier and the International Boardwalk really form what most people consider this pier. Now, here underneath El Torito, uh, this is called the Redondo Landing. And this is kind of the closest kind of shopping mall part of the pier. There's Kobe, Pearl, and Gem. So they've got little, you know, oysters in this thing that you can open up. Here, let me pan the camera down so you can actually see down there. There are some, you can open those up and you can get a pearl, put it on your necklace. Over here in the Pier Bakery, they're selling world famous churros. There's a gelato place down there and a gift shop. Okay, so heading over uh, down the pier this way, we see Mermaid's Dowry for gifts and souvenirs. If you want to pick up a boogie board or you want to get a hat or some sunscreen, that is totally where you could do it. This works out to be a little bit of a almost food court of sorts, um, but this is the Port Side Cafe. They say they specialize in the original Port Side shrimp. So you can get this big platter of shrimp here. Uh, and it's $3 extra per shrimp is what it says. Uh, octopus, 10 bucks. Clams, 10 bucks. And this is really popular in the summer. I should point out here if you want to get what they've got this port side Cajun bowl. It says back by demand from the lobster festival, $40 for this big thing. And you come here in the summer and you will see families getting these huge seafood plates. It's really kind of crazy how much uh, seafood these places turn out. 
So I mentioned Korean restaurants. Here's our first one we're going to see. This is the Redondo Beach Crab House. You can see the Korean on the sign. And uh, there's no indoor dining, as we see in here. And usually these tanks would be filled up with crab. But if we take a look at the menu up there, you can see there's uh, lobster, crab legs, steamed shrimp, uh, and, uh, you know, all sorts of Korean seafood. If you like spicy things, great place. And they've got this really neat view of the beach just to the south. We'll go ahead and take a look at that view of the beach to the south just off the side of the restaurant because it is a pretty nice view. Now, shooting this in January in California, the water temperature is probably in the range of 55 degrees Fahrenheit today, so not super warm. Um, so that's why most of the people are on the sand and not in the water. Now, most of the parking around here is underneath the pier. Well, right next to it, there's a big parking structure. I like to park, if I can, where I parked today, was just up here overlooking the beach. And there's also this neat um, beachfront boardwalk. They call it the Strand. It runs all the way down to the Palos Verdes Peninsula up into uh, Santa Monica. So if you like riding bikes or things like that, you can do that on the Strand for a pretty long way. Here's a little uh, shop cart of sorts that's opened up outside. Looks like they're selling, what are they selling? They're selling a lot of bubble things, bubble swords. All right, friendly guy here with bubbles. Look at that, you can get a bubble uh, pony. And uh, then on the left in this two-story building, on the top of it, there's a French-Japanese restaurant called Maison Riz. I've not eaten there, so I can't tell you how good that one is. Uh, there's another pearl restaurant, clearly a popular thing to buy from a pier. There's a, another seafood restaurant here called the Pier Seafood. Uh, but as you can see, being a lot of Korean-owned on the menu in the side, there's corn dogs, coleslaw, and kimchi here at Pier Seafood. Let's see if they've got any pictures inside. No, no pictures inside, but they do say on the sign that they have baked mussels ready. $3 each for the baked mussels. Right to the left here, we've got an ice cream and yogurt stand. It also has cappuccinos and smoothies. Not selling a lot here uh, on this cold winter day. Now, this pier, a uh, popular place for fishing. You can see a lot of fishermen that are out here just to the left. Well, let's go ahead and walk down here. Uh, Osi Girl and I, we have eaten at this Korean restaurant. It's called Pacific Fish. Normally, these tanks are full of crab. Um, and uh, out here, you can see uh, on the menu, they've got shrimp plates, calamari plates, about 12 bucks. But uh, their specialties are definitely more of these kind of steamed shrimp, uh, the live crab, and... Uh, They've also got uh, Korean spicy fish soup and clam soup. So those are, if you want to check out what their specialty is, get the Korean spicy fish soup. Only for lovers of seafood and spicy things together. Okay, now as we walk down this way, you can see the pier has a little bit of cement and a little bit of wood. The original construction of this pier was wood back in the end of the 1800s, though the pier had a really big fire in uh, the 1980s, like around 1988, that destroyed a lot of the pier. And so when they rebuilt the pier that they completed in the 90s, most of it was recompleted as cement. So that's why you'll see uh, both cement and wood exploring the pier. Now for the people that are out here fishing, They've got places to wash off the fish and the carcasses here on the cutting table. We'll take a look back at the pier this way. That's underneath the French restaurant in El Torito. We'll take a quick look back down at the coast this way. It's a little bit of a foggy day here in Southern California. 
and then let's go ahead and walk down this way. Oh, I should point out that uh, this place on the corner is the Redondo Beach Coffee Shop, also for bait and tackle. So if you're fishing and you need to get your bait and tackle, you can pick it up right there from that shop on the corner. Now, this is kind of a good spot where you can see the old wooden construction of the pier. So you can see that we just walked down this part of the pier and the first leg that we walked down was this part of the pier. One of the coolest parts of the pier is Old Tony's Restaurant. They've got this like second floor uh, place to eat up there. That's pretty neat. I can't vouch for the food, but the view is pretty cool. So to make this all kind of like a pleasure pier, those little wharves were connected by this cement thing out here. Uh, this is mostly popular for people that are fishing, but it's also just a great spot to kind of hang out on a hot summer day. It's cool here, good place to go for a walk, good place to go and kind of get away from people too. Also, if the waves are pretty big, this is a great place to come and see big waves. Now, Redondo Beach, um, I mentioned this is one of the most famous piers in Los Angeles. Probably the most famous pier is the Santa Monica Pier. Uh, I did a walking tour of that a few weeks ago. If you haven't seen it, I'll put a link at the end of this video or in the video description. But the Santa Monica Pier is famous for having a lot of um, amusement rides on the pier. And uh, you notice this pier does not, well, it doesn't currently. There used to be a roller coaster here, and that was torn down like in the 30s. Uh, and when they did the remodel, um, they were actually planning for a carousel and some other things, but those ended up not ever being built. Now, from this part of the pier, we can see the entrance to the Redondo Beach Marina and Harbor. Uh, Redondo Beach, if you have a boat in this part of LA, this is probably where you'll park it because it's the kind of only marina on this part of the bay. The next closest marina is in Marina del Rey, which is near Venice Beach, or if you go to the south, there's a lot of stuff in Long Beach, but this is kind of the central pleasure boat harbor. So if you're looking to take boat tours or things like that, they will all leave from here. Though if you're looking to go to Catalina, you'll find the Catalina Ferry out of Long Beach and San Pedro down in the south. We'll take a look back at where we walked on here. Take a look at the pilings of that pier. You see these pilings are cement on this side, uh, but then there's a few kind of wooden pilings that are over under that original spot. Now you can also walk right there along the shoreline, and uh, that shoreline is where the bike path goes. Also underneath these buildings is where the parking structure is. So the closest place to park for the pier is definitely right underneath it, uh, though the view's not as nice as the parking that I showed you earlier. I will point out that all of the parking here is pay parking. You're gonna pay by the hour for the privilege of parking here. This is the widest section of the pier. It's got some big, really big picnic tables with some benches on the side. Uh, great place if you're getting some seafood just to come out here and chow down. Um, Redondo Beach used to be connected to uh, Los Angeles by train. There was actually Back in the early 1900s, there were three trains that would come from downtown Los Angeles to Redondo Beach uh, every day, four trains on Saturdays. You might wonder, Chris, where's the train now? It's long gone. There is also, uh, it was connected also by this thing called the red car, which was sort of a trolley of sorts. And I know many people think of Los Angeles as a place with terrible gridlock and terrible traffic and no public transportation which really does describe it today, uh, but actually Los Angeles in the early 1900s had one of the world's largest streetcar networks, and it was known as the red car that would come down here. Okay. We'll take a look off here, just to take a look a little bit at the entrance of this wharf. You can see the waves kind of breaking down here. Let's take a look at the waves breaking on that rock. Ooh, calming. I always like the sound of the waves. You probably can't hear the sound of the waves all that much with this microphone. But you'll just have to 
trust me that there's a, a good wave sound going on. Now over here on the right, you can see the top of the parking structure. Um, this is, uh, I think it's about a three-story parking structure. Um, but on weekends it is quite busy. Okay, so looking down this way, uh, right at the end, that's kind of the landing where El Torito was that we started. We'll take a look back at this map again so you can see where we've come. Uh, we started here, we walked down here, we walked up here, we walked around this horseshoe, and now we're going to go down this way and along the International Boardwalk, in case you're following along and planning to do this walk yourself. If you are following along and plan to do this walk yourself, I think this is one of the best ways to do this walk. Now from here, there's two ways to get down. We can either go down the long way, down this ramp, there's a kind of a shortcut that we could take through the parking structure, but we're not going to do that. We're going to go down this ramp. We'll point out down here, you can see they've also put a lot of tables out here. So if you're looking to do an outdoor picnic, you can do it. Also, we see some folks right here that are chowing down on their tasty seafood plates from one of those seafood restaurants. You can see they've got a big thing of seafood right there at their table. It's probably one of those $40 seafood plates. All right, now most piers in California aren't kind of like these multi-level or multi-story piers, so it is sort of neat to walk down this um, cement half circle ramp to get down here. Uh, and this part of it, where these boats dock, this is where a lot of the, the fishermen dock. You might also find some boat tours out here. It smells particularly fishy. It is low tide right now, and so if we look down, you can actually see some barnacles that are on these rocks kind of exposed. I think our little explorer back there in the back is interested with the concept of barnacles. Uh, and uh, here's one of the places that does boat rides. So one of the things, let's see, what does it say with this, about these boat rides? Let's take a look at this. It says, boat rides, uh, Friday to Sunday, 12 to 6 p.m. You can see sea lions. You can see dolphins. They offer whale watch, two and a half hour whale watch, or 45 minute boat rides. They've got bathrooms on board, and there's a website if you want to book. Um, in the summer, you'd see people renting paddle boats and various things. I don't think those paddle boats have gone anywhere for a while. I always like to point out where restrooms are, and there are restrooms here to the right underneath this pier. I will say that's probably one thing that leaves a little bit to be desired in my mind are the restrooms that are on board this pier. Uh, they exist, but they're not the world's best restrooms by any means. Um, so, underneath the parking structure on the right, there used to be some restaurants, some seafood restaurants when I was here last time. They appear to be, um, closed, although it has a sign that says, oh, it says open for more quality seafood seating. We're going to get to quality seafood. This restaurant, like if there's one that's the most well-known on the pier, it is definitely quality seafood. Uh, and quality seafood. So quality seafood, which we'll, like I say, we'll, we'll get there in just a second. But it is this big restaurant that starts here and goes over here and has a seafood market that extends all the way over here. So that's what we're going to explore in just a second. Uh, you can see it being low tide. Looking down here, there's some more barnacles that are just on the side of that um, wall. And uh, there's a sign that tells us that they have Lobster Fest here every September, all month long. About nine months to go for the next Lobster Fest. Let's just kind of take a scenic look down here back at these boats. This is a nice little spot to look down and see this little inner harbor right here. Great place to maybe take a selfie or a nautical themed picture. Okay, so quality 
seafood. We will... Um, usually it's a fish market that you can walk into. It's kind of busy and there's a lot of people, so I'm not going to walk through the whole thing. I'll just kind of show you a little bit from the outside here. Uh, if it's not too busy, we might try and walk in, but uh, we've got grilled fish in here. What are they doing? Grilled fish. They've got a quite extensive menu with almost anything seafood under the sun. Okay, now that that group cleared up, I'm going to squeeze by here. So they've got this huge seafood counter in here that has all manner of seafood that you can take home or you can have cooked here. Sea bass, octopus, um, big Hawaiian ahi steaks, yellowtail steaks here. Lots of seafood sardines, smelt, uh, small octopus. This is like as close as you're gonna get to what I'll call like an Asian seafood market. I feel almost anywhere in the US where it's just open and it's here. If you're looking for California sea urchin, you'll find live sea urchin right here, $17 a pound. They've got live local conch, they've got clams, they've got Pacific oysters, and we'll, well, we'll walk down this way. You'll see more of that, they've got quite a bit. And let me just show you where we came from right down here. That is where we came from, where we started. All the hot food orders are there at the beginning. So if you want hot food, that's where you'll start. If you want uh, the cold seafood or things like that, then you come over here. You don't have to stand in that uh, line for the hot food. Okay, to check out the other thing, we have to go out and then back in. So uh, here is the oyster bar, and they've got lots of different kinds of oysters from different places. They range from like $3 maybe to $5 each. And they tell you where each of the oysters are from. You can see they've got up here uh, Baja oysters are $2. Select oysters are $3 up to $4.50 each. You can get a whole big oyster plate for $38. Over here is where they got the bigger things. If you want to get a cooked Eastern lobster, $27 a pound. King crab, $49 a pound. California lobster, $44 a pound. Some more shrimp, things like that over there. Then they've got live crab in these sections. You can see these are Santa Barbara crabs. They've got separately the male crabs and they've got the female crabs. And then uh, over here, they've got live blue crabs, a Maryland specialty, uh, $10 a pound for the live blue crabs. And that is Quality Seafood Incorporated. Uh, it's like, it's almost a really an attraction in and of itself of this pier. So if you do come to this pier, make sure you walk down to this bottom level to check out quality seafood. So this is the now international boardwalk part of the pier. Uh, there's some gift shops over here. It, in my mind, this is almost like, if it's like the most run down or the least renovated or the least authentic part of it is, is definitely here. A lot of these are kind of like dive bar sort of things. So you can see what they prominently display in the window are their beers and micheladas. Tacos, burritos, nachos. Another one where if you were to come here on a summer day, uh, there would be lots of people at these bars on days that people could be in bars. It's the International Boardwalk, and so this is International Ice Cream. Get an ice cream scoop and walk down the boardwalk, right? That sounds pretty nice. Though I'd say, when I think of boardwalks, I often think of things that are wooden, and so the fact that this is just... Um, asphalt is, is slightly less exciting. We see here's another bar. I don't even know what the name of this one is. It just has a bar sign and they let you know during the pandemic you can pick up all this alcohol to go. Take out cocktails, beer, wine, uh, though the current California regulations is you do have to buy some food along with your alcohol. Uh, here's another churro shop. The churros here 
are $2.75 for a churro. Boardwalk Candies closed. Oh, here's an interesting yellow boat. You know, I am attracted to anything that's yellow. This is a uh, glass bottom looking glass boat. So you can see uh, down in the harbor. Um, there's more restrooms here on the side. And uh, I should point out that the restrooms are closed daily, 9.15 p.m. to 5.30 in the morning. So if you need to use the restroom after 9.15, I guess you have to find another one. We're passing another seafood restaurant. Here's a gift shop called Spy Base. That uh, if you want to spy on your neighbors, nanny cams, counter surveillance, you can pick up all that sort of stuff there. It's kind of a weird thing to be in the uh, International Boardwalk. Here's a coffee shop. Here's the Redondo Beach Sport Fishing and Whale Washing. So you can pick up some uh, fishing rods, get your whale watching tours, another gift shop over here. And this brings us to kind of the, the quiet part of the International Boardwalk. Why is it quiet? Well, because this on the right is usually a very lively bar. I think this is one of the most popular bars on the Redondo Beach Pier, and bars are closed, and so that makes this part very sleepy. Clearly some folks wanted to come out here and have a little picnic, and so they brought their own chairs. Oh, you can also rent um, stand-up paddle boards from these places. There's a place here called Paddle House that you can rent these stand-up paddle boards. It's a pretty popular thing to do um, out kind of in the calm waters of the Redondo Beach Harbor. So if you want to try your skill uh, on a stand-up paddle board, uh, it's actually a lot harder than it looks, I would say. You can watch some people doing it, and you can just watch how often they fall down. And if we take a look over here to the left, then this shows us essentially where we came from, the pier and the boats right over there. Well, let me fix this camera so you can see me. <laughs> well, if your travels bring you to Southern California, the LA area, and you want to check out kind of a cool pier, and you've already done the Santa Monica Pier, well, Redondo Beach Pier is a pretty cool one to check out, too. When you do it, make sure you check out quality seafood. Fellow explorers, if you enjoyed this walking tour, I'd really appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up. It lets me know that you like this kind of content, so I make more of them, but more importantly, it also lets YouTube know that you liked it. If you give it a thumbs up, YouTube will know it's a good video and share it with more people, which really helps out the channel. Well, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more of my walking tours, you can click on the screen. You'll find my one for the Santa Monica Pier right here. You'll also find more of my walking tours in the link in the description below. Well, as usual, I won't say goodbye because I'll see you in one of these videos. And so will she!